Hey, what's going on, guys? Pete here with MixBetterNow.com and LearningToMix.com. I hope you're all doing well. Got a brand new Mix 101 video for you today. We're going to be talking about multi-band compression. What's up? This is Stephen Slate. You are watching Mix Better Now. All right, guys, so we got a session pulled open here, two compressors on the screen. On the left, your standard SSL bus compressor. It's just a stereo compressor, okay? Doesn't have to be an SSL, doesn't have to be a UAD. It just, you know, whatever, stereo compressor. Uh, on the right, we have a multiband compressor. Um, this is the Dynamics module from Ozone, uh, specifically Ozone 7, but it doesn't matter which you know, ozone it is. Um, I wanted to choose this one because I feel like a lot of you guys are probably going to have a version of ozone in your, in your plugin library. And, uh, you know, the concept here is the same regardless of which version you have. The one thing I just want to touch on before we get going here is that if you are currently brand new to mixing, or if you're struggling with compression, I would politely advise just from personal experience back in the day to put multiband on the back burner for now. If you do not have a really firm grasp on compression fundamentals, you know, the main four controls, attack, release, ratio, and threshold, um, I think this could actually be more confusing and do more harm than good. It certainly did with myself. I screwed up a lot of mixes back in the day trying to use multiband before I had a really good grasp just on compression. I was trying to run before I could walk and uh, it just didn't work out for me. So take that for what you will. So this session here is unmixed. This is a uh, mushroom suit from Zach Jones and the tricky bits. Make sure you go check out Zach and the band Zach Jones and the tricky bits.com. Uh, I think Zach was just in the studio with a great big world. Um, they were doing a new record. It might be out right now. Uh, but Zach plays drums for a great big world. Um, he also drums for Sting. So really cool stuff. But anyway, this is uh, his first record. And uh, we're going to be taking a listen here. But I have both of these compressors on the two bus. Uh, I want to go from the mix bus here because I feel like that's where we're really going to be able to hear the most uh, of this multiband. So I have the multiband bypassed right now. I have the SSL on. This is just a regular bus, you know, stereo bus compressor, 10 millisecond attack, 100 millisecond release, two to one ratio. Uh, just sort of pay attention to what the needle's doing here. We're going to go from the second verse into the second chorus. Check it out. Beautiful Betty in her baby blue dress. She's looking so peaceful, but her family's a mess. They came from all over, but who knows what for? Cause the person they loved isn't here anymore. Cause ashes are ashes and dirt is dirt. All right, so you guys get a little flavor there. The only thing I have on the tracks is Slate VCC across um, as an insert across every track set to the Brit 4KE setting. Uh, over here on the two bus, I have the um, the mix bus version of the VCC. A little bit of half inch tape, okay? Um, you see the compressors that I have up there. And then I have a Drummer S73. All this is doing is adding a little bit of parallel EQ, a little bit of shine up top, but that's not important. Just wanted to point that out. So what is multiband compression? Why would we want to use it? Well, the concept of multiband compression is, I'm going to bypass the stereo bus compressor right now. I'm going to unbypass this guy just so we could look at it a little bit. And really what a multiband compressor is, is it is a compressor that contains multiple compressors inside of it. And each one of these bands is a compressor. They have their own set of controls, right? You could see they all pertain uh, to one another here. Um, I have the all setting open. You can go band by band and uh, flip through these accordingly. But I just think that it's a little bit easier to sort of see everything, okay, you know, uh, our ratio, our attack, our release. And um, what it pertains to is compressing different areas of the frequency range 
for different purposes. Um, some instances that I would want to use multiband would be if I had a pair of overheads on a drum kit and the cymbals were like really harsh and splashy, um, I would probably want to use a little bit of multiband uh, to tame some of the harshness. Um, you know, same frequency range I'd be talking about, you know, maybe 2K to 6K would be if we had an electric guitar and it was very bright and bitey, um, I would maybe want to pull some of that down, uh, you know, more so than the other frequencies, okay? Uh, DSing, if you have a sibilant vocal, uh, typically what a DSer really is, it's just a compressor and all it does is compress either around one frequency that you tell it to or between two frequency points and it pulls it down. Um, you know, maybe we have a bass and, the, you know, it's got some really good tight low end. We don't want to compress the low end too much to make the bass sound smaller. So we might let some lows through down here. Uh, you know, like say if we have this around 200, we might not compress this very much. Maybe we'll compress it a little bit more in the mids, um, you know, you know, in the upper uh, mids as well. So I kind of like to look at these four bands as low end, uh, high end up top here, low mids, and then our upper mids. If you want to simplify it even more, uh, you can, you know, just sort of strip it down and then only use one band um, down here. We could completely turn one of these off, but I, you know, I don't feel like four is going to be any more confusing than three for you. Um, so, like I said, these are some instances in which we might want to use that. Also, in mastering, um, you know, if we're listening to something, you know, in the bottom end might be a little bit, um, a little bit overbearing. We might want to compress the low end a little bit more than everything else. Now. Check it out here. So the best way to be able to really hear what multiband is doing is to sort of go th through some of these presets. And these are actually pretty good starting points if we uh, we open this guy up. Now presets, I'm not a big fan of using a preset to get an end result, but it's, you know, they can be nice places to start for sure. Uh, so if you look at some of the names here, added presence, analog dynamics, crisp mid-range, detailed mid-range, what these names indicate is that we're going to be able to sculpt the EQ of whatever we want to compress with a multiband. So it's sort of like EQ and compression really working closely together um, because that's what we're, we're going to be manipulating is EQ through compression. Now, I know this may sound a little confusing and overwhelming, you know, if you're new to compression and you're sort of trying to figure all this stuff out. I get it. I mean, uh, you know, I struggled with compression for a long time when I started out, but um, but it's really not that bad if you just break everything down, if you have a firm understanding of, you know, what attack and release do, what ratio means, and then your threshold um, you should be good. So let's just cruise through some of these presets. I'll let you hear what's going on. We'll bypass it in and out. Uh, I'm just going to click on the first one here, added presence. So right away it went to three bands. Um, if we look at everything here, uh, you know, we can learn some stuff from this. Now, uh, okay, on the bottom here we have a ratio of about four to one. But going up here we have a much more soft and gentle ratio of about one and a half to one. Uh, it's, it's 20 millisecond attack, 60 millisecond release all the way across. But what this immediately says to me is that we're going to be compressing the bottom end here a little bit more aggressively because it has a higher ratio. So let's just take a quick listen. Beautiful Betty in her baby blue dress. She's looking so peaceful, but her family's a mess. They came from all over, but... I'm going to go from the chorus just because we're going to have more instrumentation in. So the idea here is we can pull down our threshold, which is going to be this, uh, this fader here. Uh, and we can dial in how much compression we want for each of these bands. Check it out. We can solo these bands. And what you're going to be hearing is everything between these two frequency points. So, uh, two, what is that? 248 and then like 3.2 K. Uh, and we can slide these around to wherever we want the crossover point to be. But, uh, check it out. We'll solo it. Now, 
we can solo any of these bands that we want to really zone in and listen as to what's going on between the two frequency points. Uh, on the bottom end here, obviously 20 is going to be um, our lowest. 20K up here is going to be the top end. Uh, so we can set the crossover to whichever we want. And essentially, it's just compressing each of these bands uh, differently. Now, we can set them all the same uh, because what's going to happen is different EQ uh, frequencies are going to stimulate the compressor more or less than others. Low end inherently stimulates compression a lot quicker, uh, you know, than than high end will, than treble will. So, uh, you know, it's learning all these things, and it's just sort of using multi band uh, to tame. Now, I personally like to use multi band as uh, sort of like a band aid. I don't really use it so much as. Um, uh, something to enhance with if I hear a problematic area, you know, for example, um, uh, sibilance in a vocal, harsh cymbals, harsh guitars, I'll typically use that, um, you know, or or even if I want to let low end through and maybe not use a side chain on a compressor or maybe a si uh, compressor that I'm using doesn't have a side chain on it. Okay. These are all some reasons that I'll reach for it. Let's keep going through some of these presets here. Now, if we look at the amount of compression taking place through each of these bands, it's varying from band to band. Now, of course, these are just presets and this isn't what I'm dialing in, but uh, but the concept here is that we are going to be able to do different amounts of compression in each band. So, you know, for example, if we just want to do a little teeny tiny pinch in the upper mids, maybe we want to compress the low mids even more. We can pull that down. We can set our ratio, our attack, and our release uh, really to taste. So it's kind of like having four options here in this case. Uh, it could be three. You could have a five band. You could have a, you know, you could have multi uh, more bands than that. It's really whatever multi band that you're using. Um, you know, uh, here's a master bus setting. Now, in this case, this is what you will see on uh, a stereo compressor is this is going across the entire frequency range here. OK, it's just one band. So when this pulls down, uh, that's sort of what is happening with a stereo compressor, just like our SSL here. If I bypass this for a second, look at the needle here and then pay attention to when the kick and the snare hits and then watch what the needle is doing. You're going to see it really jump out. Why? Because the kick and the snare transients are going to be uh, the largest, the loudest, and the most extreme, sending the compressor into compression before anything else. Check it out. Now, if we go to the verse, obviously there's going to be just about you know drums and vocals in. Beautiful Betty in her baby blue dress. She's looking so peaceful, but her family's a mess. They came from all over. But if we go to the chorus, you're still going to be able to sort of see that bounce from the kick and the snare. So let's just say I'm like, okay, I want to let the kick through. Don't really want to compress the kick too much. Let's turn this off and let's set up the multi band here. I'm just going to go back to default. We'll get this guy out of the way. So commonly, maybe a three band would work, but uh, we'll leave it at the four. We'll figure what our crossover point's going to be here. I'm going to take this to about 200. And uh, a lot of our, our snare fundamental is going to be over here on the low mids. Up here, we're going to have, um, you know, some things like the top end of our snare. Uh, up here, we're going to have some cymbal splash and stuff like that. Let's go ahead and just get like a nice even split. Um, I'm going to dial in the bottom here. Let's see. We've got a two to one. That's nice and gentle. Kind of like that. We'll beef this up a little bit. We'll maybe go four to one here. Do something like a 10 millisecond attack. 
just set this up, see where everything's at. I'm going to put this to about four as well. Same thing up here. And the nice thing is we can use the threshold to really coax as much or as little compression as we want out of it. Check it out. So you see how uh, the low mids were really doing a lot of heavy lifting there. I had the low end nice and gentle. Uh, we really weren't doing a lot. And uh, it's interesting because as different parts of the song go along and change, different instruments come in and out, uh, you're going to see uh, different amounts of compression happen, specifically here uh, on the mix bus, okay? It's a little bit harder to hear nuance on something like just a drum kit or on the bass and whatnot. But, uh, but this is really uh, sort of, you know, a crash course. I mean, multi-band compression is a really deep concept. We could even talk about, you know, upward expansion, but, but look, just think of it as multiple compressors within one unit, right? One plug in one box, and it all really revolves around EQ and how we want to shape EQ through compression because all compressors are going to compress, right? They're all going to give you a ceiling and a floor and they're going to squeeze transients going to be an automatic volume knob. They're going to say, you're not going to get any louder than this, and you're not going to get any quieter than this. If you do, it's going to go like this, right? So just think of it as if you have a problematic area that you want to tame a little bit, or if you have another area of the frequency range that you want to enhance a little bit by not compressing and compressing everything else, Multiband is a great option for that. I like to, uh, another way you can maybe think about it is subtractive EQ, right? If you're carving out certain uh, uh, pieces of EQ, uh, you know, with a parametric EQ or, or whatever EQ, if you cut the mids, you're going to inherently boost the low end and the high end just from taking the mid range out, even though you're not boosting the lows and the highs because you're removing mid range. So, you know, obviously, if you take away the top end, you're going to boost the lows in the mids. So just think about EQ and compression, how they play together. This is using compression to manipulate EQ and at the same time, control your transients. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed that. That is it for me. My name is Pete with MixBetterNow.com. Uh, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit the little bell icon next to the subscribe button so you stay in the loop as to all the content that I've got going on. Make sure you click on, there's two links in the description. Make sure you grab your free audio swag bag over at MixBetterNow.com. Free multi-track sessions, uh, free mix templates, free drum samples, all kinds of goodies in there. And then head on over to learning mix, uh, LearningToMix.com. Grab your free 14-day trial. We have super high quality premium tutorials. Every month we mix a new song. You get those multi-tracks. You get to keep them. There's all kinds of really good stuff in there as well. So check it out. All right, guys, as always, I appreciate you watching. Thank you for your time. I hope you all have an awesome day, and I will catch you next time. What's up? This is Stephen Slate. You are watching Mix Better Now.